Hi everyone, welcome to my studio. I'd mentioned a little while ago that I was going to be introducing you to a new range of paints which I've just uh, been lucky enough to receive from Michael Harding. They've sent me the botanical set here and these seven colours which I chose to add to the botanical set because I thought they would be a good addition or either that or I thought they were interesting colours. So today I'm going to put them out on my big butcher's tray here, which is the way I prefer to have my paints arranged when I'm painting. And then I'm going to probably tr paint a picture with them. I think that seems to be a good way of finding out what the colours are like. Um, I have swatched these ones here, and this is they. We have here moss green, uh, perylene green, blue verdita, quinacridone, purple, um, alizarin crimson, and orange benzin, orange Benzimidazolone, uh, that's a word I'm not familiar with, benzimidazolone. Uh, it's even worse than quinacridone, as if that isn't bad enough, I need to learn a new one, benzimidazolone. Zolone. Benzimidazolone. <laughs> I think I'll just call it Benji. Um, anyway, so these are really nice colours and I think these are going to make beautiful flowers, don't you? Two lovely greens and then these colours here. Uh, Perylene green is a very, very good colour for winter landscapes and things like that. So we'll be using that one uh, this winter. But for the time being, we're thinking more summer. So in this set, so that's that, that set. I haven't swatched these. I haven't opened them. I haven't done anything yet. But we've got thalocyanine blue, which is like um, a little bit like... Um, what do you call it? Um, Prussian blue. So that's a, a greenish blue. Then we've got sap green, hooker's green, aqua green, bright green, green gold. And then we have got yellow benzimidazolone. Um, this is another Benji. And then we've got quinacridone gold, burnt sienna and quinacridone rose. Red, rose, rose. What a wonderful range of colours those are. So let's squeeze some of them out. I always start with the lightest colour. So we're going to squeeze out some yellow benzimidazolone, benzimidazolone. If anyone knows a better way of pronouncing that, I would be very happy to hear it. Benzimidazolone. That's that one. And we'll put that there. And then we've got quinacridone gold, which is always exciting. And that's a lovely, transparent, rich gold colour. Then we've got Burnt Sienna. Whoops. These colours are by Michael Harding. Michael Harding started out as a um, oil painter and produced, after a while, he decided to start making his own oil paints, which... Um, have been available for some time. I can't get that lid to go on, we'll come back to that. Um, and then a couple of years ago, he decided to branch out into watercolours. And so this is the result of that. I'm going to try that again. They are all natural. They're very high. There we go. Just a bit of patience is what was needed. A uh, very high pigment load. Um, now we're going to go for orange benzema thing. Um, high pigment load, that means they are strong, strong paints. Quinacridone red. They don't have any filler. They are significantly more expensive than some of the cheap Chinese paints. But... Um, I should be actually labelling these. I need to get a pen and uh, write down what they are because otherwise I won't know. So uh, what I normally do is um, I put it on the side here. So uh, yellow, I'm going to just put YB and this is quinacridone gold and this is burnt sienna and this is orange NG and then we've got quinacridone 
rose. Right, so then the next one is going to be alizarin crimson. They do have preservative in them, but that's a good thing because that means that the paints will last. Uh, alizarin crimson, A, C. You don't want your paints to be um, going bad on you, do you? Uh, and then we've got quinacridone purple. If they didn't have some kind of preservative in them, then they would go mouldy or they would, the bacteria would develop gas. That's quinacridone purple. And eventually explode. So we've got yellow, quinacridone gold, burnt sienna, quinacridone, sorry, orange bee, quinacridone rose, alizarin crimson and quinacridone purple. Right, so now we're going to green gold. I'm really quite excited to try these out, I must admit. Green gold is a colour that I know Daniel Smith do and um, Art Spectrum as well. And it's a lovely colour. Then we've got Bright Green Lake. These colours are going to be very good for, obviously, for um, foliage. That is Bright Green Lake, so we call that BGL. Then we've got aqua green. That looks like it's going to be beautiful. I call that a G. Then we've got, um, let's go to moss green because I'm trying to sort of keep it in order of strength. So that will be M, G, and then, sorry about the sniff, Booker's Green. That's, I'm going to have paint all over my hands. That's H, G, and then Sap Green. So S G and then Perylene Green, which is the nice winter green. P G. The initials just give me a chance, you know, a hope that I'll be able to know what they are. And that's uh Phthalo blue, so that's P, B, and then the other blue that we have is ver blue verdita, which is like, it's a very pretty colour that's going to be beautiful for things like flowers, you know, um, forget-me-nots and things like that. And then I'm just going to, oh, that's verdita blue. So we've got two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen, sixteen. I know there's seventeen colours, and then the last one is warm white. So we'll just put that there. I think that's going to be quite useful in many ways for colour of birds' feathers and things like that, or pale flowers. So there we are, they're all out now. And that's very exciting, isn't it? Yes, so now we need to think about what we're going to paint. Now, here we have these colours all actually just swatched out in just little squares so that I can see roughly what they are. And I have to say they are absolutely beautiful colours and um, I'm really, really impressed with this. All of them are absolutely lovely 
beautiful colours. And as they're drying, they're just developing their own characters a little bit more. But I mean, look at this beautiful turquoise there. And I know that that's going to make absolutely stunning greens when mixed with the the Benji yellow there. And um, all of these colours look like they're going to be wonderful mixers and that they're going to make wonderful flowers. So I'm really pleased with this because painting flowers this summer is going to be one of the most important things. And also, of course, using flowers as accompaniments to birds, which we're going to also be painting quite a lot of this summer with any luck. And naturally, um, our sort of semi-abstract kind of wanders across a piece of paper that we do quite often. And, um, and I know you all enjoy those, plus the um, whimsical type of thing as well. These colours are going to be absolutely a real uh, plus to my um, work, I am sure of. And I heartily recommend them. You can buy them from Dick Blick in America direct, or you can buy them from Amazon. They have them on Amazon as well. Dick Blick sell them on Amazon. So that's a good way of getting them from Mr. Blick. Um, for people in other countries, of course, there's Jackson's who sell them. And they will ship worldwide at a reasonable price, even to Australia. So don't worry if you live down there. Um, you can get them too, as you can also in Canada. I can't say that the Canadian dollar is very strong, so therefore things all seem very expensive to people from Canada. But um, the price of these is um, significantly higher than the Chinese paints, like I said. Um, but I wonder whether some people might not feel that it is actually worth paying the extra. These are absolutely professional paints. These are meant for professional painters as well as obviously beginners too, if you choose to invest that amount of money. Um, why wouldn't you? Uh, and so let's get started painting something. That's enough chatting for one day. I'll push this over here and find myself a piece of paper. So here I have um, a sheet of Meaden um, 12 by 9 sheet of hot press, which is always nice for painting flowers. And I'm going to go and have lunch now. And then after lunch, I'm going to come back and we're going to paint something together using these lovely, lovely colours. So I've had a go at trying out these paints and this is what I've produced. Um, <clears throat> I thought I would... Uh, just try them out before I actually film myself trying them out because it's probably wise to have a rough idea what's likely to happen but I must admit that my first impressions of these paints is wonderful I have to say they're absolutely delightful to use um, and a couple of unusual experiments or experiences these um, leaves here in this nice greeny beige color they came about when I mixed um, burnt sienna uh, which is this one here, with aqua green, which is this colour here. And I was quite surprised by that. So that's a lovely colour and that's easily mixed, so that's super. And then this aqua green, which is another colour, another use for it, mixed with quinacridone rose, that produced this surprising bluey-grey colour, which is <laughs> about the last thing I expected, to be honest, from basically a green and a red and and you get this lovely bluish green gray bluey gray color so that was interesting and they blend beautifully here they've just kind of melded into one another there's four or five different colors there and so what i'm going to do now is i'm going to take this sheet off of here and as i mentioned before it's a sheet of needon 100 percent cotton 140 pound hot press paper, which just means that this particular hot press is um, this one here. It's a little bit smoother than um, uh, than cold press paper and therefore it acts a little bit differently on, um, you know, when you're painting with it. Uh, so, um, just thinking here needing to move these things a little bit. Um, you won't be able to see the whole palette. I haven't got enough um, camera space for the whole palette, but um, we'll see what we can do. Right, I'm going to do something sort of 
abstracty. I'm going to do some circles and some areas of colour, just uh, just colour. And we'll have a look and see how these colours come out. So perhaps we'll start with the greens. Perhaps we'll start with green gold. And this way, without mixing them too much, you'll be able to see how they behave with one another. Green gold. And then, move my water a bit closer so I can reach it without stretching. Um, then we've got um, bright green light, I think it's called, is it? Let me see. Yes, bright green light. So we'll put in some of that. And then we've got aqua green. Beautiful colour. Beautiful turquoise. So then we have hooker's green. No, moss green this one is. Moss green. Wonderful leaf colour, eh? I think that would do very nicely. And then we've got Hooker's Green, which is a bit darker, I think. And then this one, which is... Uh, green. And then perylene green. Interesting to see how they dry. get this kind of little bit of beading beading kind of effect as you put it on the paper because of the being hot hot press doesn't soak in quite so easily as cold press and I do love this aqua green color so we'll use that one again and this one moss green Uh, got blend there, I didn't clean my brush properly. And I think I'm just going to pick up a little bit of quinacridone gold. Look where that goes over that. So transparent, you can see the veil of colour there. V E I L. And let's put a nice blob of this in here. Okay, so we'll let that kind of dry, but just to emphasize these colors, I'm going to go in very thick. So not so much water, I'll just put the same color on top to see how that looks. And I do think it's a really, really good idea to, when you get new colours, to practice like this just freely. Don't worry about fine detail or any kind of special 
brush strokes or anything, just, just use the colours and see what they do. Enjoy them. You might want to use cold press paper if you're more familiar with that. I was just looking at that and thinking it's gone very grey and I think that must be because it's a, that's the, um, I can never remember the name of that, it's the Per Perline Green, I think, which is very uh, greyish compared to the greens of these other ones. You're not going to get the same effect with these as you do with the um, Kiritake colours because these, these are not going to be opaque in any way, shape or form. That one is green gold, not, not quinacridone gold, but green gold. And this one light green and this one is you can learn the names this way too this one is aqua green and this one there must be hookers green So now we've got a lovely background to do some um, doodling on top of. And I think the thing to do is to dry it. And have a look, see what it looks like when it's dry. So I've got my um, Coliro um, gold paints here, which I've activated with a little bit of water to get them to soften up a bit. And I'm going to use them for some of the embellishments on here. And I'm also going to use a white pen and I've got a couple here. This is a Uniball Signo and this is um, the other one, which name I can never remember, which is the Hybrid Gel. And then I've got the Signo Gold and I've also got um, some, a Tombow and a Micron, Pigma Micron. So all of these might, might not be used. I'll move those out of the way for a minute. <clears throat> I'm going to start off with a little bit of gold paint and then also some some colours. And I don't know, I might even use white paint. I'm not sure yet. <coughs> and I'm not quite sure what I'm going to do, but we will start. I'm using a, um, this is a draw well brush I've got here from Japan, which I buy direct from Mr. Miami um, in, in Japan and they're very good value for money. You have to pay a little bit of shipping to get them, but um, they are worth it, I think. So we can um, just let our imagination uh, run wild here and do whatever comes to mind. <clears throat> it's best not to plan, I think, it's best not to plan anything too much because chances are it will not go the way you expect if you plan it. And if you just let, oh, excuse me, I'm going to cough. <coughs> if you just let it um, uh, evolve, you will feel happier about it, I think. So I'm just, I'm going to, I didn't mean to do this, but it's what's happened. So that's what I'm doing, this here these lines around the outside edge. And um, we can do some, some parallel lines if we want. And perhaps we could
Mm, that's not showing up very well. That's probably a candidate for for white paint there, perhaps, or pen. But we could put a branch through here, perhaps. And also, you might paint... Oh, be quiet. That's Gabriel, the cockerel. He's so noisy. I hope he doesn't bother you. We've got two of them, and they're both noisy. Um, you can do something in gold and then embellish it or go around it, outline it with black or white. Go over it again if you want. But this kind of forms the background of your mark making. And um, somehow this kind of thing is quite um, soothing, I suppose. Especially if you work on this smooth paper. Um, the hot press paper is much more receptive to this kind of mark making. I think it, the, pa the paint sort of sits more happily on the surface. Let's try some silver. And um, yes, so let's put some little leaves in here. You really, honestly, you can't go wrong. It doesn't matter what you do. Really, really, really can't go wrong. There's no such thing. Okay, so I'm going to say that's the end of the brushwork and I'm going to pick up the pens now and do something with them. You don't ever want to be doing this when you're in a hurry. You know, it's not something to say, oh, I've got to get this done because uh, I need to get dinner ready and I need to finish this before before um, something happens. You don't want to do that. This is something to do when you want to just, you know, Chill. It's a good thing to do <clears throat> instead of watching the television. Sometimes if you do if you do black lines like that, you suddenly feel the urge to fill them with gold pen. And that's always a good thing to do. And as I said, the pens and the paint work much more smoothly on this paper. Yeah, the Meaden Hot Press is ideal. Um, let's go around these. It's just a nice feel. It's like, I think I've said before, it's like drawing or painting on silk, if you like. That's kind of what it makes me think of. I've never drawn or painted on silk, but I sort of imagine that that's what it would feel like compared to cold press paper, which is not smooth. It has its place. Cold press, no doubt about that. There we are. I 
I really like these um, Tombow brush pens. You can e you can easily get them on um, Amazon. I'll put a link in the description below. Um, I love the way you can get the thick line and the thin line. Just by pressing harder, so you can sort of go halfway round, something like that, quite thick. And then you can just go in the middle of something like that, quite thin. It's just endless what you can do with this. Makes very good dots very easily. Um, yeah. That paint's a bit wet. I don't want to spoil the pen by going into that. So let's um, let's finish these. Um, that's dry. So this ink from this pen will go over the Kaliri uh, metallic paints quite easily. I suppose you could say that most of my painting is nature inspired because I do use leaf motifs. Leafs, leaves and flowers are my preferred, um, uh, um, you know, well, motif, I can't think of a better word for, for it than that. And uh, some people don't, some people are more into geometrics or other things. But for me, the nature uh, realm is quite, quite good enough, really. Um, so let's I'm going to try something with the white pen here. That one seems to be a little bit sleepy, so I'm going to try a different one. The white pens are fantastic for um, making dots. You can't really do that with a paintbrush, little dots like this. And there's nothing like dots to embellish. I think they work really, really well. You just keep building it up, building up, building up. Oh, that used to be a song, didn't it? Build me up buttercup. Do you remember that? The circles are good too. Um, okay, now we need to do something down here. This, this is a bit strange what I've done here, but we will, we will come up with something. Uh, let me see. Hopefully this is dry now, so we'll do spirals over here.
One of the things that art teaches you about life is never to give up. I think that's probably one of the best uh, lessons that I can pass on from my experience, whatever value it has, is that even if you don't like what you've done, you don't have to stop, just keep going. And believe me, I have to put that into action, that moral position every single day as a YouTube creator, because you have, as a, as a consumer, we don't appreciate at all, because I'm a consumer too, I watch videos as well as make them, but as a consumer you don't realise sometimes what's going on in the world of the creator. The creator is the word that YouTube chose to talk about the people who make videos. Whether you like it or not, I don't like to be called the creator because that's obviously God. But anyway. They keep moving the goalposts, in other words, so you just never know. You never know what you should be doing, really. Okay. That's the beauty of this gold paint. It is opaque, it's very good. So all of that can just be obliterated. So we can leave that one now. And so on, and it goes on. Um, particularly like that one, I think, actually, having, having said that. Can do another one here, a bit similar to that one. And um, where else haven't we got? I haven't got anything here. We could, could do the same here, couldn't we? And do them a bit bigger. Okay. I'm 
I'll just give a shaky line there. I think that's quite nice. And on this side, I think I'll just do a bit more shaky line and some empty leaves. Perhaps not quite that empty, but come on, brain, work. <laughs> Sometimes you have to wonder. I just wanted them all sort of, you know, irregular, and I think that's what we've got there. <laughs> it's a bit early in the morning. Okay, let's put some circles around here. And I think it's time to put some flowers in the middles. Pressing hard on light. to be light. Well, I doubt very much whether very many people have made it through this far in this video. But if you have, congratulations. <laughs> um, Just the idea is just to show you that art is naturally created by the human being. And you don't have to try too hard. So all of these have got their own characters, all of these different stones. If somebody else had taken this background and embellished it, they would have come up with something completely different. One way of doing this kind of thing is to Look around your home and see if you can find motifs that you can copy or use for inspiration if you want to use the jargon. Copying is an easy word. And that's an example there using geometric shapes. That's an example of non-natural because I was saying that my tendency is to always go for leaf shapes and flower shapes but you could go for geometric shapes, like the spirals and squares, and they look good too, and in combination with um, the floral and the leaf, it's a good contrast. And you can fill them in with the pen, so you've just got a kind of slightly broken effect. I think that looks quite reasonable. And you can also, the other thing, another thing you can do is if you've got, if you do circle, uh, let's do it with a pen. If you've got circles, you can do dots. I mean, you can do dots with circles around the outside and you can make them different sizes as you go around like that. So that's another thing. There's so many things you can do. And this is, I'm using a micron pen here for this. And um, you could, on these ones, you can just do parallel lines like that. And then you could, on the ones, these ones, you could do this.
The Micron pen is very nice as well. It doesn't have that thick and thin effect, but it has, it's nice to use. And I think really that's probably more or less probably getting to be more or less where we want to be. We can do some more dots in here, various random things. So I'm sure that Michael Harding would be shocked to think that I'd used their beautiful professional watercolors as a background for some random mark making, but um, why not? It's a good way of getting to know your paints to feel comfortable with the colors and to learn how to do things like um, transparent layers and so on and so forth. And um, altogether a pretty enjoyable sort of way to spend an afternoon. So there we are, that's, that's, my, um, that's my mark making voyage from today using Michael Harding's wonderful, beautiful watercolors that I highly recommend and all the information is in the description below. So I'll let you go and I will under, don't forget to like and subscribe and to join, to turn on notifications. That's very important if you want to be notified when we put up a new video and um, consider joining us on Patreon or on YouTube membership. So I'll say bye-bye for now, everybody. Bye-bye. <laughs>